Okay, God is spirit. Angels are spirit. Jesus, through the incarnation, took on flesh, took on humanity. And his body did ascend with the wounds of Calvary. And it says he will return in like manner. He was in that glorified body, but it was still his body. Angels don't have bodies. Okay, St. Thomas Aquinas, one of the early writers in the church, said that angels have a density because they are spirit. Now, how many of you have ever walked into a space and you felt something was there? Yeah, yeah, a lot of the angel stories I get are like that. People feel something, you know. And that's what Aquinas was trying to say. He wrote uh, volumes on angels. Now I'll tell you a funny story about Francis. You know, he was eight years in seminary, has numerous doctorates and master's degrees and all that. But anyway, he said, when I wrote my first book, he said, oh, I've just got all of Thomas Aquinas' volumes on angels. He said, I'll bring them to you, because I was writing at home. And he came in and he had these, you know, antique books, you know, I mean, they just smell good and they're beautifully bound. And he put them on the table. And I said, oh, thank you, you know, and he turned around and he's walking away. He goes, <laughs> And I hear him laughing, and I'm like, why is he laughing? And I open it, and it's in Latin. <laughs> and, I, and I said, very funny, come here, come here. I said, you have to translate, and he did. You know? <laughs> he sat there and read me the Latin, and I said, English, English. <laughs> so Aquinas is, is kind of, the, they call him the angelic doctor in the church because he knew so much about angels but you do have to find it in English you know, to understand it. So anyway, the angels are created beings, they're spirit. Uh, they appear in numerous ways to us. Now the middle, uh, let me go back to the hierarchy for a moment. The middle, the middle group are the group that watch over the universe. Okay, they're, just, they're out there and they're watching over the universe. The lower group of angels, which includes angels and archangels, are the group that minister in the world. Okay, those are the ones, if you ever see an angel, you're seeing one of those. Um, in scripture, we have two archangels mentioned, and then in the tradition of the church, we actually have seven. So the two in the scripture, is Gabriel, uh, many of you know about Gabriel. Gabriel's very active around the birth of Jesus, appearing to Zechariah in the Holy of Holies, and then appearing to Mary, and then coming to Joseph in a dream. Well, Joseph had like five dreams. You know, they, he couldn't reach him any other way. He had to wait till he was asleep, is my, my opinion on that. <laughs> you know, it's like, okay, he's asleep, let's get his dreams. And dreams are very important in the spiritual realm. So anyway, we have Gabriel, very active. And then the other one that's mentioned in scripture is Michael. He's the other archangel that's mentioned. And um, Gabriel is the archangel that is in charge of messenger angels. So anytime we get a message from God, uh, the angel brings that message, if it's not spoken directly by the Holy Spirit to you. So Michael is in charge of the warring angels. This is why Michael is usually depicted in art, uh, with armor, He's, it's kind of a Roman soldier look. He's, but every, I've had pe people send drawings after they've seen him, and there's swords and armor and all of that. And Michael, of course, appears a few times in Scripture. And one, he's contending with Satan uh, over the body of Moses. We read that in Jude. And then in Revelation, it says that when the Lord Jesus returns, that Michael will be with him, and they will come together. And then Michael has the great honor of taking Satan and casting him into the pit forever and sealing it. Yay. <laughs> Yay. So uh, Michael's, yeah. Well, the other one that I like to talk about, too, that's mentioned in the Apocrypha, and it's in the Catholic Bible. For all you Catholics, you get that, uh, is in the book of Tobit. 
and it's Raphael, or Raphael. And um, Raphael is the one in charge of healing angels. And that's a beautiful story of healing. It's a little odd, but it's a beautiful story in the book of Tobit uh, about Raphael coming and bringing healing and deliverance. So he's one of the mighty angels of God. Uh, it's believed in tradition that, you know, the, remember that the pool of Salon where Jesus was coming and the people were lying around the pool? It says that an angel came and stirred the water. And the first one that was able to get into the water would be healed. So many have uh, theorized, I guess, that that could have been Raphael because he is sent by God when there's healing needed. And of course, Jesus uh, didn't need an angel to stir the water. You know, he said to the man who'd been laying there for 38 years, no. When I lived in Israel, uh, they used to bring invalids and blind and poor, uh, especially to Damascus Gate, and they would beg there at the gate. And that's the gate, because I, I, my house of prayer was up by the garden tomb. That's the gate I always had to go into the old city through. And there they were, and all these scriptures just come to life. You know, so Jesus looks at this man and says, what do you want? And the man said, I want to get in the pool. And he's got Jesus standing in front of him. And Jesus just simply says, take up your bed and walk. And the man did. And uh, he didn't have to wait for an angel anymore. <laughs> you know, Jesus comes along and the angels go, oh, you're here, good. <laughs> yeah. So those are the, like the three mighty archangels that have the angels.